Many have heard the saying, pay it forward, or seen the TV ad that has people doing kind things with a closing caption, kindness, pass it on. There is truth found in both of these sayings, which we come across in today's gospel. We hear Jesus share a parable. As we know, parables are allegories, or stories having depth of meaning through different understandings of relatability. We often hear parables using agricultural or fishing contexts, and in today's parable, a lord and his servants as it pertains to debt. We need not look too far within the parables to see that there's a figure who represents Christ, one who represents us, and others depicting those that we have relationship with all around us. The accounts mentioned in today's passage represent our lives, whether in the age we live in or in the age to come. Our debts are our accumulated sins or facets in which we need to need to be rectified. This is not to relate to having to pay off our sins through suffering or chastisement by God, but rather to spend the time and effort amending that which we owe both to God and to ourselves. God does not hold this debt over our head, but forgives our debts, as we hear the Lord in today's passage forgives the debts of the servants that owed exorbitant amounts of money, 10,000 talents. Why did he forgive? The man pleaded with the Lord to have forbearance, or makrothimison, this forbearance, or long-suffering in patience, is only something that is offered by God. As we hear Christ during his passion, for he does not have a short fuse as we often do, but out of compassion we hear splachnistis, or that he had compassion on the man and was forgiven. These divine qualities demonstrate the example par excellence of how we ought to treat one another. This is not easy, however, as we will see shortly. In the meantime, how about those talents? What kind of debt are we talking about anyway? Chocolate bar? A mortgage payment? To put in today's perspective, 10,000 talents would be equivalent to somewhere around $3.4 billion dollars or require 150,000 to 200,000 years of servitude for what they were paid at that time. Can you fathom this debt? Can you imagine having that over your head? How about the feeling of having this debt relieved? How liberating. I could imagine a person would have a, a, an eternal memory of how much this helped alleviate stress and, and brought freedom to their lives. The Lord had compassion in this parable, but the servant did not. He did not forgive a debt of roughly $12,000 in today's money, or four months worth of work. We could speculate and think maybe he had bills to pay, maybe he really needed the money. In the scheme of things though, it was nothing compared to what he was forgiven of. Please don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Yes, this passage shows the magnanimity of God's mercy and compassion and directs our lives towards understanding what we say and do to others, enlightened by what God releases from our own debt ledger. However, we hear about one swift release of debt in today's gospel. We are not always expected, though, to do the same. Does this mean we're off the hook? No. Can we pick and choose what we forgive? No. But what's important to know is that forgiveness is a process. It's a process by which we release that which we are holding to become healthier for ourselves, to become healthier in relation to others, and in the eyes of God. The very word used in the gospel for forgiveness is a verb afimi, meaning to send away, 
or release. Found earlier in the gospel through the Lord's Prayer, we hear, and forgive us our trespasses, or debts, depending on the translation, as we forgive those who trespass against us, our debtors. We use the present tense of the verb forgive, or afiamen, to indicate that this action continues. It does not end. Spiritually and psychologically, we need time to first get to a place in order to forgive, and then go through the process of forgiveness. We find ourselves to be in a detrimental state if we follow the mantra, forgive and forget. This damages us by not authentically acknowledging how we were hurt and how the hurt affected us. Many times we are reminded of a past injury and feel the need to forgive all over again. I'll be less intense than the last time. There seems to be no coincidence that Jesus had recorded had been recorded saying in another place in the gospel to forgive even 70 times 7. This can be applied to different situations or to the same based on how it surfaces over time. The goal is not the speed of forgiveness, but that we move in the direction altogether. A beginning of forgiveness for severe wounds can be separation from people that, are, that have caused us harm, allowing for resentment or anger to subside. It can be taking time in order to move beyond our impediments and find peace which only derives from our Lord. Further, we can feel the forgiveness from others, luxuriating in the joy and liberating sensation it offers, for being forgiven is something to stop and appreciate. Think of when you've been forgiven whether small or large offenses that were incurred by a spouse, a child, a parent, a friend, and multiply that infinitely, which is how God treats us. God does not hold on to our debts because we hold on to our own well enough. Whether we are the debtor or the one owed the debt, we have an active role in moving beyond where we are. God offers forgiveness for us but it is up to us to forgive others and ourselves through the process of releasing the bonds that keep us frozen in time. However long it takes, know that God is supporting us along the way, ever guarded, ever gladdened by us being freed from debts that weigh us down.